Welcome to Badminton Unlimited. Both Sattwick Sairaj Rankiwedi and Chirag Shetty undoubtedly love badminton, but they have had very different paths to taking up the sport professionally. While Rankiwedi came from sporting pedigree and wanted to do nothing else but be an athlete, Shetty made some bold decisions, putting studies on hold to get to where he is today. This is their story of how it all started. Basically, it's from family, so it's a gene like my father used to play and my brother used to play. It's like a sports family. So I used to go with my father all the time to badminton court and I used to skip all my school that day. So I hate being in school. So I always want to be in some, some sports, not badminton, but I like that sports stuff and all. So later on, like it was going good initially when I was playing uh, small level tournaments. I was performing really good. Then later on, like it became really serious, really professional for me. Yeah, like I always like playing basketball most of the time and cricket as well. So, but yeah, at the evening I used to play badminton, morning I used to play some other outdoor games. I started at the age of seven uh, in my hometown Mumbai and uh, initially my father took me uh, to the local club where we were members, uh, the Gorega Sports Club. There uh, I was practicing with my father, with my father just uh, like a hobby. Uh, there my first coach uh, Mani Shatkar saw me play and uh, he went up to my father and told him why don't you make your son join the uh, regular coaching. So that's how I started playing badminton. For me personally, uh, I think uh, after I gave my 10th board exams uh, in India, after giving your 10th, uh, it's like really important and uh, you need to choose if you want to take science and commerce. So there are two options basically, mainly. Uh, so uh, if I had to take science, uh, which my uh, parents wanted to and even I wanted to, I wouldn't have been able to continue playing badminton. So I had to take uh, commerce and uh, that was a difficult decision to take. Uh, back then when I was 16. So when I took that decision and decided to continue playing badminton, I had to take commerce and uh, I think uh, when I look back, I think uh, I did take the correct decision. Like I loved playing badminton, I didn't want to stop it completely and I think uh, uh, like just before my exams, uh, I think uh, usually people uh, take an off of 3-4 months in India usually before the 10th board exams but I continued playing badminton even a month before my exams, which was quite unusual for um, uh, like my fellow students as well. And I really loved playing badminton, so I think that was the uh, thing that made me decide uh, to continue playing the sport. So I got an offer in the academy, Gopchand Academy, so when I was in 8th standard. So it was a decision by parents whether I want to play professionally or like want to skip school and join there. It's not in Hyderabad. My hometown, it's Amlapuram, so far from, very far from there, like almost 10 hours. So, so they thought like maybe we'll give it a try at least two years till 10. Then they thought if it's not working, then we'll shift to studies. So then I went there. I don't want to go back. I like the atmosphere there. I like the spirit there. Uh, I saw the all the seniors playing, Saina Didi, Kashyap, Sai, Shrikan. So I love, play, I, saw, I saw them playing and doing well, so I like that spirit and all, so I want to play some big tournaments, so I work hard, I, I never wanted to go back again to the school and all stuff, so yeah, it how continued. Indian duo Sadwik Sairaj Rankhuredi and Chirag Shetty have elevated the status of the men's doubles game back home. Their successful partnership began as an experiment due to their physical attributes that quickly turned into a brotherhood on and off the court. He was playing in Hyderabad, I was playing uh, in uh, Mumbai and uh, both of us were playing with our respective partners and uh, so in 2015, uh, Badminton Association of India uh, decided to hire a uh, doubles coach, like a proper specific doubles coach uh, with Tan Kim Har and uh, when he came in, uh, like he wanted to change everything, like the coaching structure, everything uh, in Indian doubles badminton. And when he came in, uh, he asked, uh, "Who is the uh, who are the current uh, junior uh, pr uh, players who are playing uh, pre pretty well in the domestic and the international circuit?" So, uh, like there was Satvik and uh, his earlier partner Krishna, 
in Hyderabad itself and me and my uh, earlier partner Arjun both were not in Hyderabad so he called us over to Hyderabad and uh, I think it uh, took us time like uh, a month or so and uh, he decided to pair me and Satrik up because he felt that uh, like both of us since both of us are tall and we actually can um, be a really good uh, attacking pair and uh, we definitely stand a chance to be a top pair in the world. Um, one thing um, I like about Satvik is that he's very caring, like he's a very lovable person I would say and uh, one thing I really hate about him is that <laughs> he plays a lot of PUBG and he's <laughs> he, uh, that sometimes can be very irritating. <laughs> Hate, there is no hate with Chirag, so he's same, like, he's very caring, as I said, like, he knows everything, I call him mini Google all the time, so he knows everything in the world, he's like, if I need anything, I will ask, what happened there, any problem there, he's like, very knowledge and very kind person, so happy playing with him, initially it was tough for me to adjust with him, so because I'm like, South Indian guy, I was into more, my language people, I was, little bit difficult with communication and all later it was good but now it was like we are like more brothers so feel pretty good comfortable only thing like when he is using phone like he involves completely he don't listen anything i will keep on talking chirag 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 he he don't respond to anything he he like he involves like this so that's the irritation like when i am talking something he looks he don't respond to anything, he will like, after a few seconds, huh? Huh? <laughs> that is very irritating. <laughs>
doubles they play like just simply they just go and play that it they never thought like it's a career like it's profession like this so but yeah like playing both mixed doubles and doubles like they will be having more expectations on me on me especially like if i didn't play mixed doubles if i play good they will comment he is not focusing on mixed doubles is something like this if i play mixed doubles good if i lost in doubles he is focusing on mixed doubles he is not playing doubles something like this but yeah i won't care much about negative comments so if i get it will go into my mind and i can't be able to play it okay i know i am doing good i want to perform 100% doesn't matter win or lose but i want to give my 100% every day when i am fit so not worrying about the result but yeah i want to play 100% every day give my best and results will come at the correct time <laughs> i don't think both I, will I, lie I, to each other no to others yeah uh, can we others no i i don't okay Ready. on life i can me like uh, when we are outside like he always advise like whether to go here or here as i said like he's mini go he knows everything so yeah i feel he is better at this so if you were to play against each other have you played against each other yeah, many, many times, times. <laughs> what happens there so he's very is competitive <laughs> <laughs> so when we used to play with our respect earlier partners i think like it would used to be long matches like an hour or so <laughs> i think <laughs> i think so high maintenance i think yeah like if i am 10% is 15% <laughs> yeah 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 comparatively yeah comparative yeah yeah Yeah, I heard you're a good dancer. Ashwini yeah. said you're a good dancer. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> no. 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 Mm. I like like what? Yeah, like all the silly stuff sometimes. Uh if I want to buy I buy for all my friends like 10 15 people I buy everything. All the good stuff, but yeah, I feel yeah. like not necessary sometimes every yeah. time when i come out like for a big trip so i feel like i should take something back from my parents and all no me me is it i don't think so <laughs> together these two for one more point is it it's is it is it and they won it unbelievable coach is on the court picking his players out It's one of the great days for Indian badminton. Like it's pretty much clear uh, in my mind. Uh, like it's it's been a year and a half since we won it, but I think it's uh, still fresh the memories. Uh, I think um, like both of us, uh, I remember both of us were injured, and uh, we were carrying injuries and uh, and not just like niggles. I think it were serious injuries because after that we were not able to uh, participate in the World Championships. and uh, i think uh, our uh, like we just went on court uh, like without any expectations and uh, just trying to give our best um, there was not much pressure on us like uh, even in the finals like even though we were playing the finals against the current world champions uh, and also um, like we had not beaten them before we had lost to them twice before uh, we just went on court thinking that they are just any any other pair and it's not a world uh, like uh, super series final 
and I think that really worked well for us and uh, yeah, I think the rest is history. 2019 pushed Sattvik Sairaj Ranki Reddy and Chirag Shetty firmly into the limelight after their big title win at the Toyota Thailand Open. A maiden HSBC BWF World Tour title was secured after creating some big upsets during the week, including the scalp of world champions Lee Jun Hui and Liu Yu Chen in the final. When we are playing quarterfinals with Koreans, so I thought like maybe I, I had a strategy like from the side drift is there then we'll win first game, second game we'll lose, third game we'll win the uh, right area at the end. So that was the strategy in my mind. So I thought anyways we'll do third set with them. I was like that pretty confident and third game I was in the advantage side as I thought like in that tournament like we planned and it went like in our way so that was good then semi-finals when we are down in the second game 2016 and we made 20 all then we got confident now we can pull it out then again we lost from there then third game i was in shaking i was in so much pressure then i saw like opponents have more pressure than us so i thought okay let's leave it we, we just play doesn't matter about result, we just give our 100% that's it. And both were injury, so he had ab, I had shoulder. I, so so my main, main weapon is smash, if I can't able to smash then we don't get point. So I was preparing my mind. Both our mindsets are simple, we just want to keep it in court. Not any extraordinary points or extraordinary rallies, we just need to play safe and all. So that went pretty well in that tournament. followed up their Thai victory with another big performance during the Yonex French Open, showing they were not one-hit wonders. That time coming up just short in the final against world number ones Marcus Fernaldi Gideon and Kevin Sanjaya Sukumuljo. Mm, yeah, definitely. I think um, playing the French Open Final 2 was right up there for us. Um, I think, although we were not able to win it, uh, but I think uh, um, like the pairs that we beat uh, right from the first round, I think, uh, were really good pairs and top class pairs and uh, I think especially like we've always loved playing in uh, France. I think uh, it will definitely be our uh, favourite uh, stadium to play in uh, because we've always played well uh, in France over the years. Like the first time we played French Open we played the quarters, the next year we played the semis and the third year we played the finals. So I think it's always been good uh, playing in France and yeah, I think um, like beating uh, all the top class pairs uh, definitely gave us a boost. 2020 proved to be a great disappointment for Ranki Reddy and Shetty. On a high from putting up the best performances their previous year, the pair had to contend with a season dramatically cut short by the COVID-19 pandemic. And then Ranki Reddy testing positive for coronavirus. Uh, so initially like for me, it's like more frustrating for me. I was affected with virus, so so everything, my body shape and all, everything changed. I was training pretty good last six months. Then again, in the period of 25 days, one month, like everything got changed. Then again, I have to start from starting. So I didn't have time, less time I had for Thailand Open. I was not in shape. I can't able to play 100%. I can't able to hit smash. So I became very weak. So I became very fat. I can't able to move, I can't able to jump. If I'm jumping more than 10 or 12, I'm getting knee pain. So there was a lot of things in my mind going on before Thailand Open. Then like, it took me two months to get back in shape. I was doing only training for two months. So that period was very frustrating. I was not playing on court. I was watching everyone playing. So I was like, a little bit frustrated, like what I'm doing. I'm like, I need to, play in the top level, I'm still here, I'm very back. 
so so very frustrating but yeah like so 2020 is like changed everything not only for me for everything many ordinary people has also have faced so it's not only for me so i thought like this like maybe it's positive something was going good will happen later not just me like everybody was uh, affected by the um, lockdown the virus everything and initially i think the first two months uh, of lockdown will, was definitely tough um, because i think i remember like um, i was uh, doing the online training with everybody uh, to, we were doing that online training together at our homes and um, the last week of may uh, i i had zero motivation to uh, do it and i was just sitting waking up at 11 in the morning and um, but luckily in june uh, i was allowed to train at the uh, nearby uh, stadium and that's how i started playing and i think just play, going on to the court and playing badminton um, gave me the motivation and i like just uh, getting out of our house uh, felt uh, really good and that's i think that was the motivation i had and it went on until uh, october unfortunately we were uh, going to play the uh, danish open as well but unfortunately we couldn't because hartik uh, was down with covid so but yeah i think that uh, practice which uh, started in june really helped me uh, like uh, got my motivation back however there was a silver lining as the badminton association of india appointed matthias bo as a men's doubles coach at the start of 2021 to help the players find success on the big stage more consistently and although it's still a work in progress ranghi reddy and shetty are beginning to see change as you know we uh, uh, are working with a new coach uh, matthias bo we've uh, played against him and now he's coaching us and i think um, yeah we've been trying some new stuff and uh, yeah uh, it's still early days but uh, i think uh, in a month or two we'll um, hopefully uh, get used to it and uh, get some new things in our armor so it's mentally a uh, mind game for us like we never used to it before like we had as i told like we had like asian coaches most of the time so it's with yeah european player a coach now so but yeah like it's pretty new for us like the strategy the way he thinks like what we want to play or what opponent will play so yeah when his strategy is good when we are playing in his strategy we are getting points then we are little bit hesitating to play the world strategy or the new ones so so you want to stick to the plan so he said like believe me so it will take time but in the long run may you get like good medals or good tournament you will win so yeah we need to believe the coach present and need to get back and we need to try few more things and we have to correct it never lose hope i think uh, like what this uh, the last year has taught us that um, like the human race i think uh, like however bad the situ situation is uh, we always find a way to get back and and that the only thing ma that matters is to uh, just uh, believe uh, uh, to have the belief in yourself and yeah to never lose hope It's been a while since we caught up with your favorite players on Instagram, so here's a quick run through of the best posts this past week. Thanks for watching. Next week, we look ahead to an exciting resumption of a fully packed Babington calendar. And follow Gronje Somerville on her 14-day hotel quarantine. 
So I woke up early at like 6 a.m., talked to my family on FaceTime, and then, so I've ordered some groceries that I keep in here in case I get hungry. And then there's like snacks and like tea in here. Meanwhile, for the latest news and special features on the sport, head to bwfbadminton.com. Bye for now.